Hi all, I have a fascinating game to show you today. A clash of two really emerging technologies. Stockfish 10, so the latest version hasn't even been shown on the official website yet, but David Grosvenor is able to use it uh, nevertheless from, from another source. And this is against Leela ID 31676. So this is a very uh, new network of the Leela Test 30 network. And so this is a fast and furious game, 40 moves per two minutes with two second increment per move. Let's see the opening book, B3, Nimzo last in attack, G6 from Leela, Bishop B2, Knight F6. This is the book given to the start with. So a very hypermodern start position where white is using a double fianchetto and at the moment black, just a standard single one. So D6, Bishop G2, e5 d3 rook e8 white castles now c6 is played we have queen c2 bishop g4 knight bd2 and now that the knight has committed here uh, it's not like controlling d5 as much and leader actually plays this move you might think that's really curious or a little bit curious anyway why play it now and not in one move if it was played in one move here, knight c3, it seems as though white's going to get a small edge already well prepared for that d5 square. And you'll note also that this knight being able to use d2 is important as well. But with this configuration, Leela decides it's quite appropriate uh, here to do this now, c5 in this position. So we have knight g5, which hits the b7 pawn that's indirectly shielded well it's protected rook a e1 rook b8 queen d1 and now d5 and we've got a moroxy bind formation or the lambda formation potentially as we saw in the last world championship tiebreak game the upside down v will leela be giving uh stockfish <laughs> The lambda sign, <laughs> Im implying about Turing machines, in fact, is used in mathematics to represent sometimes a Turing machine. So uh, uh, we have h3, bishop c8 was played. Uh, with this move, the knight is being hit. And so h3 is ignoring that and allowing the knight to be taken. Here, if queen takes g5 let's see h takes the problem is queen takes is impossible because also the bishop's hitting the knight so say we protect the knight bishop f3 this position seems actually quite favorable to white even though the double pawns are there this is a really nice knight on e4 black's pretty restricted here it's a small edge uh, for white so we have uh, the bishop going back and knight g e4 b6 protecting the c5 pawn knight c4 and it looks a bit of a concern this d6 but leader ignores that bishop e6 queen d2 there's also another concern now potentially about knight g5 but there's always bishop h6 to be factoring in as well queen d7 but now knight g5 is played here regardless and uh we have actually Rook BD8, just offering actually the E6 bishop. You might think, is this a major concession? Queen D1, which rules out any bishop H6 now. Maybe uh, White would have to have played H4 or something potentially. Rook E7, Queen B1, H6 actually prompting that bishop to be taken. Queen takes king h2 h5 so with the absence of the light square bishop as was sometimes mentioned when you lose a, a bishop of a certain color it's the other color which can sometimes liven up and in fact Leela's trying to spice up the dark squares now by playing for h4 queen c1 h4 queen g5 bishop f6 queen c1 that did seem a bit of a waste of time rook ed7 so there is this nice lambda formation an upside down v here in the position queen d2 
knight d4, bishop f3, b5 pushing on both sides of the board, bishop takes d4. In fact, Stockfish had set up a tactical trap for bishop g4 here to skewer the queen and the rook. C takes bishop g4 here, so winning the exchange. So totally ignoring the knight being attacked just to win the exchange. Is there any downside to this, just intuitively, to winning the exchange here? It seems as though maybe the light squares, you could feel that these are weakened in this position. And also, black's got a great bind on the position, especially that lovely c3 square. Is this enough to play the exchange down here? The knight goes to b2. If the knight goes to a5, it seems... It can be a tactical liability, for example, in this variation, with knight c4 double attacking the queen and the knight. That can be a tactical liability. So maybe it's a little bit safer on b2, but it seems quite a passive position for white here. Uh, the rooks don't have too much scope. a4, bishop g5, queen d1, a6, what a bind, keeping the knight out of c4. Keeping that knight really restricted. Rook g1. Rook c7 then. Lila seems to dominate the c file. A takes, A takes. Queen b1. And now a beautiful hypermodern move. Queen a8. It looks as though the queen is substituting for the uh, light square bishop here. Look at this crisscross in the position. Look at this domination. And the knight is beautifully centralized. Looking at two key squares as well. What is Stockfish doing here? b4 is played and we have knight c3 queen c2 knight d5 hitting the queen from the rook queen b1 and now the rook wants to go to the second rank the seventh rank relative to black queen c2 the rook's on the seventh queen b3 king g7 queen c2 knight c3 yeah it looks as though white's pieces are just becoming spectators here the rooks seem quite frozen and timid in this position. Queen b3, and in fact, this offers one of the rooks, essentially, after bishop d2. Uh, it's a very, very dangerous position. We have the rook being offered. Is that how bad the rooks are here, and why? Well, the knight's on e2, so if, for example, this, giving up a pawn, that's the start of a major disaster. For example, here, bishop c1, hitting the knight, and here, knight takes g3, is crushing with the rook on the 7th. If f takes, then there's queen takes g2, checkmate. Uh, this would be really bad news. And if rook e1, bishop f4. And this is just nasty. If white's best, this queen takes a2. Then it's not very good. So rook d1, unless he will just trying to sack the exchange back. But has a lot of damage uh, being done here. This position, that knight still seems very passive. Bishop g5, knight b2, we have rook a3, queen e1, queen c6. The queen is coming into the position now. Look at that knight, poor knight. Rook d2, it's about to be checkmated on d1 potentially. King g2, queen c2. And now, yeah, what can be done about the knight and also e2? White's just crumbling here. King h1, rook takes d1. White's absolutely just totally crumbling. Peace down. And yeah, it's totally winning for black hair. It was adjudicated as a win for black hair. Wow. The 30 network hasn't even had uh, the second LR drop, learning rate drop yet, for those of you uh, following the project. So I'm very, very excited about Leela's progress there. And uh, yeah, beating the latest Stockfish. Okay, it's a fast time control, but intuition uh, on on the faster time controls has often been used traditionally as a test for as a good predictor of the relative strength later of engines on rating lists. Uh, so maybe this is of some significance. We'll see. If you enjoyed this game video, then please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly to become a member of chessworld.net, play against other YouTubers. You can also check the YouTube analysis of games like this in advance or update analysis from the improved menu, learn from the masters, uh, click YouTube order there. Comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. All really appreciated.
Thanks very much.